Pokemon Legends Arceus is finally here. A brand new Pokemon experience where you can walk around the Pokemon world and even fight Pokemon with your bare hands. No one's safe in the fuel era of Japan. With a brand new Pokemon game begs the question, how long and just how hard would beating Pokemon Legends Arceus take while only using shiny Pokemon? And what's that? Y -y -y yes, that's true. That's why I've returned to the YouTubes to show you the struggle, even the shines, and most of all, a damn good time. I've completed countless mainline Pokemon games while only using shiny Pokemon. Some spanning hundreds of hours, but this video, I regret to inform you, may be my last shiny only video ever. So, to celebrate the end of an era, I'm giving away all the shiny Pokemon that you see in this video to six lucky subscribers who like and comment on this video. But stop right there! Thank you very much! That comment that you're gonna have to leave is gonna have to contain a few words that uh, I'll later reveal and later in the video. For a chance to be entered, slap a like and subscribe, and let's aim for 20,000 likes to end this era with a bang. And with that all out of the way, let's just Jump right into it! This game really doesn't mess around. It starts off just like how real life starts off. You know, meeting the maker of life himself, choosing your name, what you look like, being born a full 15 year old boy. Oh, you can't forget about the unlimited cell phone plane! Oh no! What's your service provider again? Oh, it's just God himself! You know, it really brings me back 800 years ago when this exact same thing happened to me. With our appearance and name and our new iPhone in hand, we are dropped into the Pokemon world where we wake up to none other than the three starter Pokemon. Wow. Just, just, everything's just going by so fast. You know, one second I was deciding my name, even my gender, meaning the creator of life himself. And now you're telling me I gotta decide which one of these creatures I'll pick? I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna throw it in the storage the second I had a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> Still kind of a hard decision. Can you, uh, give me a second to process this? Oh, also, what's that? Is, uh, we're in the past? I mean, are we talking, like, before indoor plumbing or you're after? Just venture into the world and do whatever you want. But is it, is it, is it really worth it if you, if you have to wipe with leaves at the end of the day? Is that really a fair trade to you guys? Well, after getting up, we learned that we fell out of the giant f***ing crack in the sky. Whoa, you mean that thing? Oh, God, you guys gotta seal that thing up. You guys wouldn't have to have uh, invented flex tape by now, by any chance, have you? Because if you had that thing, you could just slap that up there with the might of Arceus himself. Problem solved. No more missing children reports needed. Or, I mean, gain, I guess. I guess you guys aren't losing any kids. You're getting them. We immediately get the catching tutorial out of the way. That I may add, it doesn't decide your starter, so don't, don't bother catching them the way you want them. Just uh, learn your lessons from me, kids. We are then brought into Jubilee Village, where the villagers quickly realize my fashion sense is, hmm, I don't know, uh, a thousand years too advanced for their pea brains. What do you mean you don't know about that new Supreme Collab? Thought you were a hype beast, old man. This game doesn't really waste any time to let you know you're not f***ing welcome here either. You're, ve you're very much so an outsider. It's actually pretty harsh for a Pokemon game if you ask me. We then meet the new slew of cast members of the game, who all are uh, ancient relatives of other Pokemon characters that already exist. That's That's gotta be it. It's not because they wanted to make any new f***ing characters for this game. I mean, that's gotta, gotta raise a few questions, like how your family DNA has, has stayed this unchanged after thousands of years. It's gotta, it's gotta raise a few red flags, does it? But at last, we finally say our hellos, mash our rays through those text bubbles, even get our own house. And before going to sleep, we witness that the hole in the sky doesn't just spit out children. <laughs> oh no! It also shoots out giant thunderbolts of Regeki! Oh man, poor, um, whatever that thing is. And yes, you guessed it. Some kid that literally fell from the sky yesterday with no f parachute is up to deal with it. So we pack our bags, pick Syndic Will, and head off into the Pokemon world. Well, sort of. This is a kind of tutorial nightmare. Especially for someone like me who's just trying to get past these sort of things so I can get into the main course meal of uh, hiding in bushes and waiting until Pokemon go bling bling. But after finishing this tutorial, we were welcomed by some villagers as uh, we're now a grunt worker for the local mafia as we join Team Galactic. I mean, something like that. I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't even f***ing read. And just when I thought we were earning those respect, we meet the head boss of the village, and he just throws us across the room like one of his backroom girls! Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Child Perfective Services, are you there? Oh wait, what? That's that's why right. you weren't even invented for another like 800 years. I better keep my cool around the samurai guy. The second I'm not useful anymore, I'm slashed in half, just like that. But now that that's all settled, we head into the field, literally and figuratively, and work towards completing the Pokedex. 
which may hey, add is just a, a school binder jammed with papers. You know, the ones you throw in your backpack for like a whole semester. I'm just pretending to write notes on it when the teacher's looking. And you never read them ever again. This is all regardless of us having sophisticated technology in the palm of our hands. You know, the one that Jesus himself gave me? I mean, what do I know? I wasn't born a thousand years ago or at 15 years of age. The gameplay, though, is literally a breath of fresh air. You know, it's sort of wild. It's almost like this game is the exact link to the past. Or maybe the crack in the sky is a, is a link between worlds, so to speak. Yeah, you know, just, just, just something to think about. Well, since we don't have any shiny Pokemon as of yet, I'm forced to hide in bushes and throw Pokeballs at Pokemon in order to progress our way in the story. And I, I really got lost in the sauce of, of Legends Arceus, to be honest. Sneaking up on Pokemon, crafting items, and even getting a samurai haircut that makes me look more like a girl than a boy. Until I remembered, oh yeah, I gotta beat Edward Cleaver hands up there. Kinda, kinda forgot about that. He did get struck by lightning. And I did what any good trainer would do. Confronted him, asked him, why you be so mad? And that didn't work, so we're gonna have to have a Dark Souls fight with him. And of course, with no shiny Pokemon, we're gonna have to fight him blades to hand. But since he only has blades for hands, he's not gonna be able to catch these hands. And although it seemed like a big point in the game, I quickly realized he was much larger than I expected. This was almost like a badge or gym leader accomplishment, so to speak. But when you go to save, you realize quickly that this is one of five of the major fights in the game. So I add that quick and start catching as many shiny Pokemon as I can. Because as this video suggests, I could only use shiny Pokemon in any major battle. And the time will come quickly for us to have that happen. After telling the boss, you did the thing, you beat the guy, but boss, it's time for me to go get the shinies right before the next big thing happens in town. So upon beating Cleaver, anyone playing the game can pick up the shiny ponytail optional quest in the professor's lab. That guarantees you a shiny ponytail as long as you save right before it right before it shows up. Just in case you yeah, just in case you don't catch it. This also felt really cheap. It's not earned. So I later caught seven shiny Pokemon because I didn't want to use this Pokemon as it didn't seem fair. But it is super cool and fluffy. At least now we can actually battle Pokemon to catch them, and I don't have to always hide in bushes. See when I say I got lost in the world of the Hisuyu region or whatever the f uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that's what this place is called. I mean, I really got lost. Like, six hours we're spending games so far. I mean, it isn't too bad. We already have a shiny Pokemon. That already is, is a good accomplishment. And honestly, everything we've been doing so far has helped completing the Pokedex research, which in this game helps you rank up to go to new parts of the region. With Cleaver defeated, we can access the Outbreak Pokemon that occur in the wild that have a whopping 1 in 153 odds chance of containing a shiny Pokemon. And did I mention that you could just save in front of said shiny Pokemon and attempt it as many times as your shiny heart desires? Trust me, I had quite a few get away on me. But thanks to this and the resetting spawns by leaving the wild area to the village and going back to the outbreak, I was able to get a shiny in no time. Was it the cricket top breakthrough that I uh, traveled to 30 times? Oh no. Oh, oh, oh no no. Nope. Our first shiny Pokemon was Pichu. While resetting the outbreak, sometimes the Pokemon that is having an outbreak will change. Or sometimes they'll just be none at all, you can just reset though. And luckily, I got Pichu. And after only three soft resets, we got our first non-side quest shiny and our second Pokemon I ever used in a challenge video. Over two years ago. Funny thing is, I only heard this shine and I never- I had my back turned to it when it spawned. So I didn't actually see the star effect happen. And it makes things much worse, I couldn't even tell what shiny difference was because of the lighting in the game. Yeah, think it's dead. So to say I freaked out is a little bit of an understatement, but after checking all the Pichus that I panic caught in the situation, there she was. Good old fashioned shiny Pichu, also known as Japan Mickey Mouse. Or, or Japan Mickey for short. Alongside our shiny Ponyta, one last ride. Till I see you again. But since we caught both of these Pokemon so late in the game, it was time for our long needed training session. And Pichu here is even gonna need some friendship in order to evolve. So I went into the next area of the game and worked on the Pokedex. While I trained our uh, new shiny pals, which included beating some merchant guy who looks exactly like Cynthia, and defeating some bandits who stole an unknown tablet. No, like seriously, like it's unknown, like the, like the Pokemon that makes the letters. I can't read. And finally, the time for Pichu to evolve. One thing that I let, never let my Pichu named Common ever do many years ago. But Japan Mickey is finally ready to evolve. So long pal. It's now your time to shine and become one of the mascot Pokemon that you were destined to be. A what? What is that? You, you, you can't? You can't, can't evolve? I swear, it did everything you needed. Oh, my bad. It's just because uh, you can't evolve when you're out in the, the outside world. Wow, it's Pikachu. Wait, even though it's the olden days, uh, the Pikachu's here still ain't fat? Well, 
At least it looks much more noticeably shiny now. While training and actually renaming my shiny Pokemon, because, uh, oops, my bad, I noticed another outbreak was happening. And on our very first attempt at this outbreak, we got a shiny Abra, my first ever challenge Pokemon video. And the reason I reached my first thousand subscribers. This was a little nerve wracking as Abra is one of the hardest Pokemon in the game to capture as you can't even battle it as it will just teleport away. And that if it sees you, it will also teleport away. So I had to take to the hills and snipe that floating cat with a feather ball. And first throw, we got it. Subscribe the Abra, the mightiest Pokemon ever. Finally lives another day. In fact, if you have been paying attention, drop a comment in any shape or form containing the subscribe the Abra and you will be entered in a chance to win all six shiny Pokemon that we, la that we later catch in this video. Make sure to have Switch online so I can trade you these beautiful creatures. And the comment selector will literally be choosing subscribe the Abra. So uh, just make sure that has it in your, in your comment, okay? I don't want anything bad to happen. But now with the three shiny Pokemon, we're already halfway through. And this has been the least stressful shiny only video of today. While trading Training our new subscribe the Abra, we came across another outbreak of Cricketot, and my pal Christian Pokemon Champion has been hunting this shiny and brilliant diamond for months, and had no luck. I had to be that guy. And we got our shiny Cricketot, just like that. Of course I had to make sure to tell him, it only took us a few minutes. This is by far the easiest shiny only challenge so far. But uh, that, that's also because we haven't had any major battles so far, so we're gonna make sure to train for those. While evolving CPC to Cricketot into an enemy airstrike alarm in the swamps. We hit gold yet again, but this time is our f first full odd shiny. Only a few hours later. Well, what I actually ended up battling to see if it was shiny to see if the animation played again, and it, it did, because I couldn't even tell that this was a shiny hippopotamus. Of course, I had to capture it and name it the sophisticated name of Yo Mama, meaning we already have a whopping five shinies in, and we haven't even completed two trials yet. Just look at them. Wait a second. Other than one last ride, they're all yellow. Is, it, is this Team Golden Shower? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. We can now ride a deer and a large depressed sea bear from SpongeBob to help move around the world faster and even dig up items. I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna lie with you. I never use this. Never use this in the whole game. The new Stantler evolution, on the other hand, is one of the most useful items in the game. Though I found it very strange to summon these mounts. You have to sit. You have to play the same uh, Epona song of the of the wind tube. And they all come to the same song. I'm not, not too sure how they know when to come. Well, what do I know? Why have multiple options? That would just be silly. But now that we're ready for the next Sekiro boss fight against the new Hawaiian Lilligant, because are we human or are we dancers? And then that's the questions we need to ask. Or is it even denser than that? See, that's the real question. I don't, I don't see these ever asked in today's YouTube videos. Lilligant is, ver is very much of a dancer and not human. Luckily, being human, we have the invincible Dark Souls dodge. And no body slamming dancing flower can touch us. Mid-roll, no matter what. We have actual shiny Pokemon to use, so we use our we use our Pokemon to battle Lilligant when it gets staggered. Giving us our large opening for attack. Defeating it in battle so that we can hit it with one final beanbag hacky sack don't come back. Which I... Which, which I guess is filled with his favorite food to help soothe its rage. I don't know. I just do the rolls, throw the balls, and defeat the Lilligan, sending it into its non-Super Saiyan form. This is where I realize you can teach Pokemon new moves simply by clicking on them and choosing the moves that they've learned from leveling up. Like a true dummy I am. Only took two badges to find that out. Here we report back to the boss. I have our end of the mission potato dinner, made by none other than the racist chef himself. But alas, we eat it with our rival, who we never got to name, by the way, giving Legends Arceus a whopping 1 out of 10 when we unlock one of my my favorite areas in the game. And then have us double battle with this Sabrina looking chick who gets to use two Pokemon and we only get to use one. Luckily, one last ride ain't have it, ain't going down that easy, so we defeat her. I but I really didn't expect to be jumped like that. I know I fell from the sky, but damn, I'm just, I'm just trying to become a real boy. We travel around the new location and oh my god, that's him. That's my boy, Growlithe. He even got this cool noble wig. I can get, I can get down with that. He looks like the guys from the 1800s. So how's it gonna go? You gonna, you gonna give me one lady or well, you wouldn't happen to actually have a shiny one, would you? Sadly, she doesn't. That's fine, because this area's story unlocks us the ability to swim on fishback. That's right, even a ghost fish, rather. We just simply have to get its favorite food, catch a dust glops, and use Dark Pulse on its favorite food, and play the Song of Storms for it. Hey, see ya, Mom! See ya, Dad! I'm going fishing! Oh, wait. My mom and dad were never born dead as 15-year-old kids like me. 
life, so not fair. Oh, also, this game has an item called a Link Cable that evolves trade evolution Pokemon without ever having to trade them. So we got ourselves the shiny Alakazam, and look at him, just floating there with finally a shiny that's different. What's that, you, you don't see it? Oh, he's, he's clearly got the pink shoulder pads, of course. He, I even got to use him in the next major battle against the thieves that stole one of the Growly boys, hoping to evolve it into an Arcanine at the volcano. At this point, I remembered, oh yeah, you can uh, you can move while you're, you're battling. Still getting used to this game still. But since there's still a crack in the sky, this Growlithe evolved into Arcanine and is struck by lightning right there and then. Thank God for this new rock typing. It is very came in handy because now it's not deaded. It's just Super Sand. Almost the shiny color, but it's not quite. So we're gonna have to beat it up. It's nothing personal. At least I'll be beating you with your favorite food. Does that make you feel a little better? The battle wasn't as easy as the first two. I actually died it twice. And it's also good to see if you're not a pro gamer like myself. You can actually restart the battle from where you died, instead of uh, all the way from the beginning, like I kept doing. It also wouldn't have felt right just because I'm making a video on this thing. I'm not sure if this makes any difference story-wise, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't. But after finally laying a beanbag beatdown on this massive golden dog, he finally comes to his senses. Which is really relieving, because you know in the modern times, buddy, if you but you bite one person, you put down, no second chances, you gotta be grateful for this one. After defeating such a noble Pokemon, it was only right to change our clothes and look more traditional. Maybe then the locals will accept us as their own, appropriating their culture and all. But after the usual mash A through text conversation, we're jumped by the leader of basically Pokemon Diamond in, in the in the Diamond Clan, and we easily deal with his Leafeon and Eevee with one last ride in CPC. See, this time, we haven't done enough exploring and catching to move on to the story, so I had to go back, we had to go back to the last region. Meaning we'll have to do more work for the Overlord in the black trench coat kimono. So it's time to say goodbye to Pikachu and say hello to Big Fat Rat. Mind you, we're only 13 hours into the game right now, and we already have five shiny Pokemon, and even three out of the five main bosses defeated. This is insane. Even faster than my shiny Gen 2 speedrun. <laughs> then no one watched me. And that game gave you basically two guaranteed shiny Pokemon. While researching, I also was resetting to see if I can get Outbreaks. And albeit not a not a Growlithe, we got Volpix. And since it was so cool, I had to go get it. And I just realized at that moment that I have almost a full Gen 1 team if it wasn't for uh, CPC and Hungry Hungry Hippos over here. But... With Mr. Beast Bomb here, the nine-tailed fox, we have our full shiny team. Well, at least for now. As while I was doing the Pokedex to proceed in the story, I heard a shiny spawn somewhere, and I quickly turned around and see the shiny Splash himself had spawned before me. And after a quick battle, we got our full team of two full odd shiny Pokemon. I was pretty happy. I didn't even have to hunt for the replacement for Ponyta, I just spawned in the overworld. On top of the outbreaks, this easily makes it one of the easiest shiny only challenges ever. Without the stress of making this video finished as fast as possible, I was really able to enjoy the game to its fullest potential. But honestly, it does make shinies feel a lot more uh, like a cancellation prize. But as of today, people don't really have time and attention spans for multiple day shiny hunts, so... I understand. I understand the shift. We finish the Pokedex research, rank up, and move on. In the next region, we meet Ingo, a man who spawned in the same region like us, with no memories of his past, and was also not 15 for some reason. He also just showed up one day in a village with no memories. He didn't fall from the fucking sky. He says he might get some of his, his uh, memories back by battling us. Oh, that's nice. So I'm happy to beat him up with our shiny team. CPC takes out his Machoke. Our new Motham, that I forgot to name this whole challenge, takes out his Tangela. And Japan Mickey finishes off his Gliscar. That would be a really cool Pokemon to catch shiny. Maybe after this video is done and I've traded all my shiny to you guys, I'll go hunt myself a Gligar. So normally, that would take a lot of time. But in this game, pff, no, that would be easy. But with him defeated, we can now play the same f***ing song on the flute. But this time, we'll summon whatever the f*** this abomination is. I know, I, know, I know you fan art Pokemon fans are gonna have a field day with this one. This is the new Sneasel Evolution, who carries us in a basket and can climb mountains. Kinda like Usher. I mean, it's a little bit too human-like for me. I don't, I don't really like how he walks when you, when you aren't climbing. And the basket we're in doesn't seem nearly big enough. As a child that fell from the sky, yet another clan member jumps us, this time with a good old-fashioned three-on-one. But no fear, they didn't make Japan Mickey the mascot of the series for nothing. I gotta say, as subtle and pretty much expected in games nowadays, I was still impressed by the fact of seeing snow effect on a Pokemon and characters. Not too bad for 2022, Nintendo. It's time for Dank Souls boss numero four, Huswin. Huswin? Huswin? 
Whatever, new Voltor, who has some very good attacks. But after first try zero deaths, that wooden boss never even stood a chance. You know, literally it had no feet to stand on, you know? Ingo then shows up and says he's from another world, and he basically explains the whole mainline series games, confirming that they're parallel worlds, or this is the future, I guess, or the, this is the past of the future, uh, who knows. He's also from the subway in Pokemon Black and White 2, for, I guess, but I've never played those. The only mainline Pokemon games I've never played, so f*** you. We then meet with Boss Man and eat the patats with the gang, just so that we can be summoned the next day to finally come the last Dark Souls boss, Avalog. As per usual, I don't have enough ranking for that security clearance yet, so uh, we're gonna have to go... Uh finish the Pokedex. Back to the snowy mountains to catch all the Pokemon we skipped over, grind our way to play the main storyline again. And I'm a huge fan of collecting things in video games, don't get me wrong. I've finished the Pokedex in Pokemon games where you literally got a f***ing pat on the back and, a, and you got a yay, good job, or seat paper that basically says go outside, touch grass. Hell, my favorite favorite game of all time is Banjo and Kazooie, where you literally collect things for no reason. So I appreciate that this, there is a reason for collecting things in this game. But I'm just trying to do the fastest you ever do it, you know, and bling bling and all that. Playing the game, I, n I never noticed how many of these trials, so to speak, characters jump you for their ki with their Pokemon. I was honestly at the point where I was wondering if there was a mechanic that I was missing out on. Like, is it possible to throw more Pokemon? Like, is it Am I missing something here? I'm baffled that this shirtless man challenged me to a battle and BAM! Two on one! I'm 15, you show some restraints. Can't even offer a fair battle. Have I not already won if you're using two Pokemon against one? That's why I give Legends Arceus a 1 out of 10. I'm sorry, this, this game's just super bad. But after beating the shirtless guy and chasing a child who can fly on a bravery, that, that looks a lot less uh, American freedom. We can now finally fly. Or more like a... Uh, or fall gracefully. Kind of like a glider. I mean, that, that, that can flap its wings. It just doesn't for some reason. See that? I never want to hear you say that Fortnite didn't change the gaming industry. Look at that right there. That's a glider. Glider. Now that we can gracefully fall on top of this piece of ice to acquire a piece of ice. Hey, I don't write the game. I just play, okay? Avalog's favorite food after a quick puzzle with the Reggie statues that I just YouTube the answers to because I just play. Avalog is an absolute beast of a pocket monster. I mean, this thing somehow shrinks into a Pokeball. I don't even get it. I, I don't even get me started on Waylord. This Neon Genesis whatever the f***ing Super Saiyan Power Ranger Final Form Mo Mighty Morphin f sucks. You have to play slow and patiently wait to attack it. I mean, I don't, I don't like that. I want to beat it as I dodge, not wait. How dare you demand patience from me in this Dark Souls fight? And the battle? Oh, the battle. When you stagger this big lug of Ava, he just Exodia obliterates anything you you send out to battle it. Thankfully, I had your mama. Blizzard would take it out if I didn't one shot at the first try. But finally, after many attempts and patience, I played the game just like how they wanted it and sent this Avalog back to the Ice Age. Which uh, I guess uh, wasn't that long ago. All things considered. Considering. So, with all the bosses defeated, we can finally enjoy Mochi with our friends and their professor. The end. Woo woo woo! Spoiler alert! It's not! Guys looking like a 90s snowboard jacket right off of Oliver Tree's back! And the only people that haven't turned on us, because we've been doing all the hard work, you know, defeating monsters, charged with power of Zeus, they decide, you know what? This guy sent him back to the wild. We ain't having it. I, t I told you guys, never trust the sky children. We were all born little babies, and then there's this full grown kid, a god like Savant Demon. And I shit you not, they even have a whole scene escorting you out of the village. As if we were some sort of criminal. And the entire village just watches in disbelief and disgust. This game really took a turn. We were literally what? We were literally all family one scene before this. Everything the light touches was our kingdom. Now I'm the bad guy. After being thrown to the wolves, you know, literally, we are basically told to go ask the other clans to adopt us. And they both turn us down so that we don't cause conflict. Hmm. That's nice. I guess I'll just switch the game to survival mode and carve out a Snorlax's carcass and dive inside, cause huh? F*** me. At least the merchant comes in to save us by introducing us to the most evil looking Cynthia character I've ever seen. And it wasn't for the phone confirming I was doing the right thing. You know the phone. Programmed by Jesus. I would have been like, hell no, f*** this lady. You see the wolves? I trust them more than you. You're like the reaper of death, exiled to the wild. I fell from the sky, lady. I did nothing wrong. Anyways, we gotta go get the red chain, which also makes it seem like we we're doing some bad guy vibes. But as I was saying, the phone is like, nope, here's the door. Walk right in, making us find the light trio. After being introduced to some new Hisuian Pokemon that haven't got the spotlight yet, like, you remember a uh, snail dragon? 
pointy fish. Bloodthirsty demon. These final Pokemon are some high levels. They're really no joke. If it wasn't for us having six Pokemon to their one and uh, the friendship and the new uh, battle mechanics. We uh, said this would this would have definitely caused problems. And uh, don't forget, we're, we're also the main character. This trial was also very obvious. He was asking the number of eyes of Combi, Zubat, Unknown, Magneton, and Dusclops. Kind of has a lock combination. <laughs> Come on. It's clearly 21. Also, I chose the Diamond Clan leader to join me in these missions, as you're giving the choice of one or the other. I didn't choose Pearl because one, I ain't no simp. And two, uh, I've never gone Pearl. Why, why would I start now? I'm only mentioning this because this actually matters later on. After receiving the three Lake Trio's blessings via postcard, we can now make the chain and head over to defeat Dracula. Or whatever awaits us at the end of the game. Whatever it be. On our way to battle God knows what, we encounter the racist potato chef who turned us down day one and find out he's secretly a ninja and the second strongest Team Galaxy member. And he's going to kill us, because the boss was way too lighthearted and just let us leave to the wild. Yeah, you're right, pretty lighthearted, just uh, leaving me to die in the wild. His team is pretty crazy, I'll give you that, but come on. Have you ever watched Naruto? The main character always wins and, ch and changes your closed-minded way of thinking to be way more accepting. Sometimes it's even on a bridge named after the main character. We then head to the stone pillar that is fully intact and definitely not destroyed. We run to the boss man, the, the child throwing sumo. W was that a knight now? I guess we'll just add that on the list too. And he wants to battle us. I mean, this guy's name is literally Commando. And you know what? I just hope he's not actually Commando underneath that armor. We are extremely underleveled compared to his Pokemon, but we take out his bravery with an an agile style quick attack and a strong thunderbolt allowing us to go twice i tried to take out snorlax hoping for a crit x scissor but instead this happens so yo mama takes out snorlax and golem with with high horsepower before going down to clefable who i have to defeat with shiny splash motham defeating the star wars named knight of the old way of thinking Commando. This man has the audacity to fall to his knees after what he feed him. Yeah, it's all cool what you did before until I beat your ass, huh? We then go into the stone pillar. We then head on to the stone pillar, and this place looked amazing. Even got your boy over here, looking clean. The almighty Sinnoh, as God is called in this game, then speaks to the Diamond Clan leader, telling him to ready thy red chain and Pokeballs, and you will capture me if you can. I guess it's meaning me, I guess, because he's talking through the other guy. If I would have chosen Mrs. Pearl over here, she would have she would have got the vision. And maybe I would have got my boating license as well. Commando being the kind-hearted man he is, hands us ten ultra balls and then we and we are faced with battling God his Is it is that is that just is this, is that just Dialga? I mean I mean really? That's all? It's just that, you know, it's it's just that I don't see a Dialga phone in my pocket. That's all, no offense, you, you, you're cool too. We paralyze Dialga with a max spark. We follow up with a quick attack. Time Wizard Dragon himself just crumbles the earth underneath our shiny mouse. Dialga with a strong high horse power, and Dialga can't move. And we capture it with one singular Ultra Ball. See, I expected this to be much more of a fight. Speaking of more of a fight, Pink Eye's white shining dragon himself arrives much after. Even powers up like Frieza and blows everyone back a few feet. Even making Commando command that we all retreat and basically live to fight another day. Meaning we have to get the red chain fixed after Dialga broke it. And after Yo Mama defeats all of the fake bandits, the Team Rocket Pokemon, we go get some ore and even head back to Jubilife Village to make an event Pokeball. Okay, no, it's an origin ball. But come on. He looks the same. Come on, can you blame me? We head back to the Battle of Palkia, and this dragon ain't messing around. He's going up for a power-up right away. And if it wasn't for Dialga, I'm not even sure he would have been alive. I mean, he literally blew the roof off the whole place, making it look a lot much more like the stone pillar that we we're accustomed to. Would have been game over. No more defeating Ganondorf, kids. Y you're dead. Jesus, better spawn another 15-year-old Sky Kid real quick. Dialga goes for a full power attack, and even that barely opens a hole in the Pokemon's power, as I can only assume it's it, it's evolved. We were wet. Is that a penis horse? I don't even know if I can show you this. Uh, now I get banned for this. Since Dialga couldn't do anything against this thing, might as well fight it hand to hand. You know, hand to hand combat right there. Cause you know, you know, I got I got I got such moves as roll, throw a hacky sack, and not die. My three special moves. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what do you got, penis horse? Okay, maybe you. Maybe you got something. Maybe you got something too, I guess. Not too bad. But I wasn't born yesterday. I was born six days ago. Put some respect on your elders. This battle was really something. Between spawning literal meteors, pink flames that never go out, and everyone's favorite waves of energy that you have to jump like a skipping rope, this horse god's got it all. Or dragon horse? 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just rolling with it. After finally defeating it, it's time. We throw our origin ball and... It broke out. And we have to do it all again. Yay. Okay, no it didn't. It was captured. And now, the day is saved. God himself even adds a little chef's kiss to the Pokeball for good luck. I mean, but is the world actually saved? I mean, an innocent child that turned out to be some sort of sky-falling demon, banished never to see his little friends ever again, no evidence actually being held against him, is now in the possession of not one, but two almighty gods? I don't know, Commando. You better go, Command, go with the f out of here because you mess with the wrong sky kid but everyone puts their differences aside for one large party because the world was saved only thanks to me really i guess everyone lived happily ever after the end or was it because palkia broke out of the ball again oh no okay no he didn't thank you guys so much for sticking around for the final installment of our shiny only series all good things must come to an end but make sure to comment like and subscribe use the word subscribe the abra anywhere in your comment and you can own one of these six shiny pokemon caught and used in this video and who knows maybe it'll even be your mama make sure to check out my video on clock tower or the entire shiny only catalog playlist as i've been r9 and i hope you had yourselves a damn good time